Jesus teaches us many things, and one of the best things he teaches is leadership. Today, our topic is Leaders Empower Others on Cell Life Church TV. This is Cell Life Church TV. We invite you to join the conversation with pastors Brian and Kelly as they discuss an encouraging topic that is relevant to life today. Hello, Hi. thank you for joining us in the Cell Life Church studio. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. This way, you won't miss any of the videos that we produce or other encouraging posts helping you to be the church in your everyday life. There is so much we learn from Jesus as we study his teachings and follow his example. Jesus is the ultimate leader, and we can learn much from the way he interacted with others, taught, and corrected. The leadership lessons we learn from Jesus apply to our lives in the church, in the workplace, in school, and at home. Mm -hmm. Today we're going to discuss one of Jesus's greatest leadership lessons, leaders empower others. Now there's an old saying that says, if you want something done right, do it yourself. <laughs> I've probably said that more than once or twice myself. <laughs> While sometimes easier, this rarely works out the way we want it to. The person who ascribes to this thought will quickly get tired and will not be able to accomplish everything they need to. Mm -hmm. They also are not leading anyone or teaching anyone. They may be robbing someone of the joy of helping. Yeah. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verses 9 through 12 says this, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls down and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves, and a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. None of us were meant to go through life alone. In another passage of scripture we'll read today, you will see that Jesus sent people out to prepare the way for him. When he sent them out, he instructed them to go out together in pairs. Wherever you find yourself leading others, you must understand that leaders must empower others to get a good return on their labors. Mm. Specifically, leaders give instruction, they celebrate success, and they teach humility. Yeah. Let's read Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 12. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him and every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there eating and drinking. Whatever you they give you for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcome, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near, I tell you. It will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Mm. Jesus had a master plan. Yes, he did. He needed to spread the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, and he knew he couldn't do it alone. Mm -hmm. He knew others had to be trained and <laughs> equipped to work alongside him and to prepare the way for him as he moved about Israel. In the passage we just read, we see several things. One of the leadership lessons we learn is that we must let those 
we are leading know what we need and expect out of them. Mm -hmm. We also must tell them what the outcome should look like. <laughs> the danger is to micromanage or dictate every single aspect of the task or job. Mm -hmm. We read some specific instructions Jesus gave the 70 disciples he sent out. But we also see where he left part of it up to them. Mm -hmm. He was clear with the instructions that needed to be followed. In a work environment, that might be giving specific safety or legal instructions. Mm -hmm. He was also clear on what they were to do while they traveled on the road. Yes. Jesus also left some of this up to the teams that he sent out. And Jesus did not tell them which towns or houses to go to. He left that up to the teams going out ahead of him. They were able to put the lessons they had learned from following and watching him into practice. Yep. We as leaders need to know what needs to be instructed and what we can be what can be left up to the individual or the team that we are leading. Mm -hmm. We should not just leave them to figure it out on their own without <laughs> any help or guidance. However, we must balance that with letting people imagine solutions and come up with processes and something that they can try out on their own. Yeah. This leads us to celebrating our team's success. Woohoo! Celebrating. <laughs> I like celebrating. It's all fun. Um, leaders must celebrate the successes of their teams. We must give credit where credit is due. Yeah. It is poor leadership to take credit for the hard work that your team puts in and take ownership for your team's successes. Mm -hmm. Poor leadership. <laughs> we read about the return of the 70 to Jesus and their report in Luke chapter 10 verses 17 through 19. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Hmm. Hmm is right. Yeah. <laughs> The 70 were excited to return to Jesus and report all the great things they were able to accomplish as they prepared the way for his ministry. And verse 17 says, they returned with joy. I'm sure Jesus welcomed them back and was full of joy with them. Yeah. Now, when the people we are leading accomplish anything, big or small, we should celebrate with them. Mm -hmm. We must encourage them, even if everything did not go according mm -hmm. to plan. Celebrate the successes and the things that didn't go well. Remember, things that do not go well are learning opportunities for the next time. That's right. Jesus celebrates their success by giving them even more authority and power. We must do the same with the people who look to us. Along with celebrating success and learning from mistakes, we must reward these things with more authority and responsibility to the people who worked hard. Mm -hmm. Celebrating successes is great and a real morale boost. Success can go to your head though. <laughs> so we must also teach humility in success. That's right. Too much success is not a bad thing, <laughs> but it can easily lead to a prideful spirit. Proverbs 16, 18 tells us, pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride has taken down more leaders than anything else. <laughs> Too much pride can also destroy a team. Mm -hmm. In all of Jesus' ministry and teaching, we do not see pride. No. All credit is given to God. Mm -hmm. Jesus cautions the returning 70 disciples in Luke 10, verse 20, which says, However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Mm. All about priorities. Amen. <laughs> It is very dangerous mm. to think that success rests on our own gifts and our own abilities. Yes. Our gifts and abilities, they come from God through the Holy Spirit. Yes. We are merely stewards of these gifts, talents, and abilities. We must not take credit for what God is doing in and through us. Mm -hmm. Leaders must be an example of this and help those they are leading understand it too. We are God's instruments 
to be his hands and his feet of Jesus in a lost and dying world. Everything we accomplish is in and through God. <laughs> it certainly is. Yeah. The best leaders are ones who give instruction where it is needed, celebrate successes, and lead with humility. Mm -hmm. They praise publicly and correct privately. That's right. Jesus is the best example of a great leader. Yeah. Whether you are a student leader, a parent, a supervisor at work, or a church leader, following the example Jesus gives us is absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. None of us are perfect. No one expects you to be. In humility, do your best and don't expect anyone to be perfect. That's right. In all things, leaders, empower others. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for yeah. spending this time with us. We do look forward to hearing your mm -hmm. thoughts. Please be sure to share this video with your family and your friends. Until next <laughs> time, be encouraged in Jesus' name. Yes, bye-bye. Bye -bye. Thank you for joining us for Cell Life Church TV. Be sure to like and share this video with your friends and family. We hope you have been encouraged and invite you to join in on the discussion. If you have comments or questions about this or any of our other teachings, please comment below. You may also email us. We enjoy hearing how these messages impact your life. Please consider supporting Cell Life Church financially. You can donate to support a pastor or provide for orphans and widows. You can also provide clean water and medicine, or you can purchase Bibles for Christians and Muslim nations. Details for these and more can be found on our website at www.celllifechurch.org.